It is the worst ailment in Elden Ring. Not Scarlet Rot. Stick Drift! I know, bud, it's sad. Ugh. That is really drifty. It happens in variable amounts, too. All right, it's time for an autopsy. Oh no, there's dirt in the controller. Ah. Oh no, I'm, I'm a dirty boy. I don't usually, well, it might be like from a candy bar or something. Sometimes I get controllers back, like the single-handed controllers from people that needed them repaired. And sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Some people eat a lot of Doritos while playing their video games. Well, I think we should do this scientifically. I mean, the, the last time I looked into this, I my conclusion was that it was the carbon film potentiometer causing a problem. But I think what we should do is we should switch. Wait, why do I say we? You're not doing anything. You're just watching. Well, I guess that's doing something. Fine. We will switch. Just to make it, like, scientific, I'm going to swap the vertical and horizontal potentiometers. So if it's the carbon film causing the problem, that'll cause a bias in the um, left or right direction. If it's a mechanical problem, the drift will persist in the vertical direction. Actually, we don't need to desolder the entire analog stick. We can just remove the potentiometers. Tin them with evil lead solder. It'll make it easier to remove. Then I'll hit it with my Heiko desoldering iron. <laughs> Yeah, I woke up this morning and I'm like, what am I supposed to do this weekend? And I was like, I don't really have any plans. So I was like, I guess I'll try to fix that controller. <laughs> we do have like pretty lame winters here in Wisconsin. It's not tons of snow. It's more like it's just cold and it's cold for a long time. Okay, so this is the offending pot. Put a V for vertical vendetta. And I'll mark the direction of bias. So yeah, our winters kind of suck, but it's it's not like an upstate New York thing where you get like six feet of snow. It's just cold. But the thing is, if it doesn't snow, there's really nothing you have to do outside, like for house chores. You don't have to like mow the lawn every weekend or rake leaves. There's like not much to do actually. That one came out fine. There we go. So I think I talked about this in the other video, but how this works is it's a carbon film potentiometer, so it's using the conductive yet resistive value of carbon to create a variable voltage. So see this little wiper thing here? This is the thing that actually goes back and forth. So in the unit, it's oriented like this. Right there, there's a raised portion. That's the wiper. So all this metal here is connected to the center pin. Then there's a carbon ring on the inside. On, well, on the inside, but on the outside of the inside. Around the periphery there. One end goes here and one end goes there. So if you measure that across, 9.7K. That looks deformed there, see? Compare that side of the ring to that. I can zoom in with the camera. I'm going to have to get my spectacles on here. Oh wait, what? I have that microscope thing. Why don't I use that? I keep forgetting I have that. Here is the horizontal potentiometer. You can see somewhere from the up and down movement. Yeah, so again, this is the, this is the common. Well, this is what actually goes to the ADC on the microchip. And then if you look up at the top, you can see that's actually where the wiper doesn't actually move that far. See that? All right, that's it. I'm kicking you out. I banish you to the world of Pagan. No one here knows who the Avatar is. The way of water. So yeah, mild wear, right? Now let's look at the offending potentiometer. See if you can notice a difference. It looks like it's melted. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, got, a, it's got a kind of a groove as well. But that part doesn't look much different, but yeah, the what happened? It almost looks like some kind of grease. Uh, can I zoom? Look at that! Oh, it's, it's, what? 
I'm so, look at this. This is weird. Where does this come from? What is this stuff? Oh, what the hell. There's no taste to it. Before you freak out, I'm a carbon-based organism. Spoiler warning, so are you. Did this, wait a minute. The stick itself has some quote-unquote permanent grease. Is this grease from the from the analog stick? But if that's the case, why is it only on one side? Or maybe it's random. Well, oh man, you can see it's really okay. That was just a dry, a dry Q-tip. Man, it's really worn down there. So okay, maybe the grease being there is just random. There wasn't enough of it for me to get a good taste. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. All right, so I've got one of the leads on this. <laughs> Remember those Coke machines that used to sing back in the 80s? I think they sang that song. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. There's actually a fair amount of resistance just from the carbon to the lead, about, about 120 ohms. What's this side? 160 ohms. Is the carbon just worn away there? <laughs> no connection. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, is there metal? I bet there's metal under the carbon. Unless they're carbonizing the plastic. 121 ohms resistance. 1.36. That's taking a lot less effort than it really should. I mean, do we even need to swap the axes? I think... I think we can call this, it's the carbon film potentiometer. Now, yes, they've been using these potentiometers ever since the um, PlayStation 1 DualShock, which was like, what, 1998? Ooh, look at that. Adding alcohol draws a stark contrast between the metal backing and the carbon. Do you ever see those videos where people get like old video cards and stuff and they put them into all these acid baths and they spend like $200 in chemicals to extract $20 of gold. Well, I mean, yeah, they cover all this stuff with gold. But it's a gold plating, so it's incredibly thin. It's like microns. Maybe they're skimping on carbon, you know, they're, they're it's like, oh, there's not enough carbon in the world. We have a carbon shortage. <laughs> Use less of it on the pots. Um, yeah, so if we go, so again, I'm, I've got this going to the, to the wiper lead, the center lead, and now it's 90 ohms, but yeah, so look at this metal ring here, and then it's covered with carbon. This acts as a 10K resistor, and so you've got a wiper, and so you have zero volts here, and reference voltage here, usually, uh, it's 1.8 volts on this controller. So as the wiper moves this way or that way, it basically changes, it changes the voltage, it goes from like, well, it's about half. It's like, so it's like 0.7 volts and then it goes up to like 1.1 down to like 0.04, whatever it would be. However, if this carbon here on the wiper gets worn through, like in this side, we see that we have a two ohms resistance versus a hundred ohms. So we saw this was worn through more and this is the offending side. So basically there is a shorter path yeah, basically it biased. So when it moved in this direction, well, I mean, it didn't even have to move in this direction. The fact that, but it's not stick drift. It's carbon film potentiometer failure. But yes, well, obviously I scraped away more of it just to verify there's metal underneath, but this was more worn away, which means you're, and since this metal gives you like only two ohms resistance down to the wiper, that means in this direction, there's less resistance, which means the pot's gonna bias in this direction even though this is the wiper part. Well, wait a minute, does that actually make sense though? Because, well here, where's the, well, both sides were worn away, although the one on the left, on the one on screen left was worse. Yeah, so you've got two, two tines touch the wiper in the middle, and then one tine interfaces with the outer carbon ring. One ring to rule them all, Frodo. Looks like they've tinned this with like, solder or something or maybe well, I don't know what they would use wouldn't they use tin to tin it shut up okay now yeah think about let's say this thing's in place like 
Th these things are really small. They look big on your screen, but these things are really small. Okay, so this is the offending side. So if you think about it, actually, as you go this way, so that wiper moves down and that wiper moves up. So really, well, both sides had a problem, but it was drifting this way. I wonder if it's just if, if it's the um, the pressure of this spring angle. Let's because you know they're just making a spring here. Oh, there it goes flying. <laughs> making a spring using the steel, like if it's not bent perfectly correct. See, like you could you could have it be over bent, like this, this these things sticking up right here. Like if you had it be over bent, you wouldn't even notice, it would still make contact, but it would wear away at the carbon film longer. Whereas if it's too loose, if it's too far down that way, it wouldn't make contact. So obviously you'd want it to have more force than not enough. But maybe, yeah, it's just like the randomness of like, oh, this one was bent, it's got a little too much force, and this one doesn't have as much force. So that's the thing is like, if you try to, you can, well, here, I'll show you. You can buy, I've got a whole bucket full somewhere. Yeah, you can buy these off Amazon, cheapest chips, but they have different resistance values. They make the sticks overly sensitive, like, um, you, you don't have to move the stick very far and you'll you'll push it all the way to the edge. I do have some extra uh, potentiometers I pulled off other controllers. Okay, this is pulled from another Xbox controller. I just had it in my access bin. Actually, stick drift is the number one cause of me having to repair controllers. The single-handed controllers I build for people, that is easily the number one cause of people sending them back for repair. It's not even my fault! This one has wear on it, definitely, compared to this one. Oh, I probably should say, um, this is this is an Xbox Core controller. Uh, I did a workshop at MGC in the beginning of May, and there's a guy who joined the workshop who's a Microsoft employee. He asked me if I needed any controllers for accessibility. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'd take some. He gave me like six of them. So one of them I kept, because my Xbox upstairs, I was still using a 2013 model, like the ancient controller, because when COVID hit, there was uh, shortages, obviously, and like Amazon was only shipping certain things, and people were still ordering controllers. People ordered a lot of controllers, so I had to go to the used game store. I had to get them off eBay. Uh, all, and then I was like, oh, I've got this one 2016 model controller for my personal Xbox. Then I used it, and, I, and then I replaced it with an ancient 2013 controller. So I've been using this controller since May of 2022, and it's November right now, and I played... Jedi Fallen Order, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Amnesia Rebirth, and I'm about 75 hours into uh, Elden Ring when it failed. That doesn't seem like that much gaming. What would that be, like 100, 110 hours maybe, tops? Um, I have been gaming more lately than I had in a couple years past. But again, like I said, that controller was brand new in like May. Yeah, so there's some wear on this one. I don't know what kind of controller. Well, it came from an Xbox controller. And it, you can see the wear is worse in the middle than it is on the top. But also, look at this. This one has a, this is a different kind of metal. See? So this one is an Xbox Core controller. So this, this one came out of the bad controller. Yeah, that's. it looks like that. Oh, there's a name for this kind of metal. I'm sure someone knows what it is. I don't. Well, I can tell these came from controllers because they have... Uh, <clears throat> They have, they've been desoldered. Oh, pfft. well, that's interesting. It looks like blued steel. Are they trying different types of metals? Well, clearly they were. Well, it's, is it still steel? Well, let's find out. They're not reacting very well. You'd think they would. Oh, wait, well, if this is stainless steel, it wouldn't be magnetic. Maybe that's what it is, a stainless steel. Ever so slightly magnetic, but not much, as, as opposed to the pins. See that? Look at that. And this looks like about the same. So, old controller on the left, controller from May on the right. So this one on the right has, what what I say, about 120 hours on it, maybe. I also kind of wonder, if I had to, if I had to guess... You probably spend most of your time in a video game running forward, pushing up, which might be why it biases damage in that direction. Speaking of which, um, okay, this is the vertical pot direction. See that grease coming out the bottom of it? 
So yeah, that was that was grease. Strangely though, it's not coming out on the uh, x-axis side. Hey, if you ever uh, rewatch the Rocketeer, the part where they're in the the fancy club, the the singer is uh, Jan Levison Gould from <laughs> The Office. Uh, oh, this one also has this um, yellow metal. Yes, yeah, so that's three different well appearances of metal at least. This one's not too bad. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. Can you see that? On the left, the groove is longer. Okay, I went into my parts bin and I pulled out a ratty old trashed out Xbox One controller circa 2014. This is its horizontal pot. So we've got that kind of gunmetal look here. Actually, that looks pretty much the same as that other one. All right, so let's take a look at the horizontal carbon film. Pretty clean and consistent. Yeah, the analog sticks were all like chewed up and it looked rough, but look at this pot. It looks clean as a whistle. Oh, have they, have the pots gotten cheaper since 2013? It would not surprise me. Yeah, they got like the, it's like automobiles. It's like, oh yeah. Brand new car is twice the price of what it was in 2005. Oh, and it's uh, made wimpier and cheaper. Capitalism. That looks clean as a preacher's sheets. On the right, this is this was my controller from May. Looks about the same. But, you know, I, I was saying maybe it's because the character's always walking forward. So this was, I marked this one, this was the left stick vertical pot. Unless, well, maybe the tines aren't perfectly, maybe they don't have the same amount of spring, I mean, Theoretically, they probably can't, just because, you know, science! Yeah, so I would say, as far as stick drift, it's probably the spring tension of those two center tines. That tine and that tine. And then also the thickness of the carbon film potentiometer itself. Actually, we could do a test, even though I have to, I would, I'll have to destroy potentiometers to do it. Okay, so let's let's sacrifice the vertical one from the old controller, since that one is just more likely to be not good. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married several times before, and everyone was Henry. She wouldn't have a Willie or Sam. I'm a Eighth old man. I'm Henry. Henry the Eighth I am. Second verse, same as the first. Now when I say 2013 model controller, that means it's, it's, it's maximum age is 2013. It could have been made as late as 2016, because 2016 is when they started making the Xbox One S controller, along with the Xbox One S console. And the Xbox One S controller is the one where they added Bluetooth. Okay, so on the left is the old controller, on the right is a brand new core controller. Well effectively brand new. And we can see it flaking off. Not too bad though. I wasn't applying very much pressure. Same knife, same hand, same bat channel. Oh, There's still some detritus left on it. Detritus become human. There's still detritus on it. I'll lick it off. That's like really stupid. So you're sticking a knife covered with the foreign material into your mouth. Oh no, it's my spit! This experiment is ruined! Actually, speaking of ruined, I should do it up here because that way it won't actually ruin the potentiometer. It will have no effect. Oh, oh! Look at that! That didn't take much force at all. I'm able to duplicate it here, but it's not coming off as easily. Wait, I guess I could just 
compare the resistance. All right, so I've got that one there. Yeah, if you put pressure on it, you have less resistance. Okay, I'm gonna call that 300 ohms. Okay, going on to the newer one. So I can put pressure on the pin, but I wanna have very, just very, basically first contact, see what we get. Let's try here. Yeah, it's about the same, 300. So remember, this would be measuring the resistance from the surface of the carbon to the metal ring underneath, not actually the distance of the carbon because electricity will find the shortest path, which is not this, it's that to that ring and then down to there. If you touch this scraped off spot, we should get a much lower number. 80 ohms, yeah, that makes sense. You want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. Apparently that movie is now considered to be some sort of, some sort of subversive masterpiece. I actually liked it when it came out, but like, I rewatched it a year or two ago and I don't know. I've not seen a huge amount of difference between these two. Could the, could the grease cause it? How would the grease cause, well, yeah, because we saw that one pot was covered with grease and the other one wasn't. I've put three in one oil inside of this pot to simulate the leaking lubricant. I wonder if the lubricant and the carbon has some sort of reaction. Could that be it? I don't know. I'm not a carbonatologist. Kind of looks like an ohm symbol, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah, that's that's some heavy stuff there. Gonna start a fire like Tom Hanks. Here's another random analog stick I pulled out of my, my supply, and if you look really closely, it's also leaking grease in the vertical axes, not the horizontal axes. Yeah, actually, if I look really closely, I can see some grease leaking on the horizontal axes as well. You know what we could do? We could try running a bunch of current through these with grease and without grease and see what the difference is in destruction. I reassembled this potentiometer and loaded it up with 3-in-1 oil. So we're going to basically make a little space heater here. Oh, I missed it! Oh, we had some magic smoke. Oh, it was beautiful. Ah, oh, man, I'm such a loser. I've missed the magic smoke with the camera. Now, yeah, and you wouldn't normally have 24 volts going through this, but I'm just doing an experiment. Let's see if we get some more magic smoke. The difference is this one is dry. There's no grease in this one, or on the potentiometer, I should say. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. Oh, okay, magic smoke, same as before. So I don't think the grease made any difference in that case. Well, I just wanted to rule it out. It magic smoked at the same rate with both grease and no grease. The This one, okay, so this was the one I put grease in. They both magic smoked after about five seconds. But look at this one. This one had no grease added to it. And yet, some sort of liquid substance has occurred. Looks like there's like a big groove on the side. That's weird. Oh, that was the carbon burning up. That's what that was. Uh, here, let's clean it up. But yeah, it definitely generated some sort of liquid goop. But these things are at such low voltage. I mean, it's like 1.8 volts. Oh, and it makes sense though, because it's like, okay, so we put 24 volts across here, right? So this one, there's two paths through the carbon into the tines to work, but this one, there's only one path. So we burnt up the path of least resistance. Gross. Well, wait, actually, if you think about it, that means yeah, the outer ring wouldn't have a metal base on it, because if it did, it wouldn't have a variable resistance. Meaning, you should be able to just scrape this away and break the connection completely. 1.8 mega ohms, so yeah, we got most of it there. Whereas, yeah, this is actually has a metal ring under it. I don't think that's what's happening. I just wanted to see if there was a logical difference between grease and no grease, and I did it in an extreme way. And the resistance about this is, it almost seems like the grease saved this one, if anything. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like we cooked the grease, not the carbon. Whereas here, we cooked the carbon. Hmm. All right, well, I just wanted to double check that it wasn't the grease. I mean, the grease could have some sort of mechanical effect on the tines and the carbon. I don't know what that would be. Is grease a solvent for carbon? I don't know. Well, I'm going to find the two best looking carbon film potentiometers from this pile. And of course, the two that haven't been magic smoked. I'll just find two good ones. Actually, I just need one good one to put back on my stick and fix it. And then I can go back to getting my butt kicked at Elden Ring. But yeah, as far as the uh, stick drift goes, it's definitely, it's not a mechanical issue with the analog stick itself. Now these, uh, these ALP switches, the, they change them uh, from Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 to Xbox One, PlayStation 4. Uh, they're still ALPs. I think, actually, I'm pretty sure they're ALPs. Yep, they're ALPs. So ALPs is good stuff, right? But I don't think it's a mechanical stick. I, I mean, we we took a look. I was gonna swap the axes, but the, the visual difference was so obvious there was no reason to. Yeah, it's it's the it's a carbon film. It's not a stick. It's not a stick issue. It's a carbon film potentiometer issue. You know, I think part of it probably is like something like a carbon film potentiometer is meant for like adjusting equipment. I don't really necessarily think it's meant to be moved that many times. It has like a shelf life, you know, like everything, you know, like this plug has like a 20,000 mate cycle shelf life, you know, everything has a shelf life. All right, well, I'm gonna reassemble that. But as far as the mystery of stick drift, yeah, it's something with the potentiometers. Something's causing the carbon to be worn away at a higher rate than it used to be in the past. It's crazy, like, how expensive connectors are like the old the Xbox the 2013 model controller would have two connectors but since 2016 they actually add an IO expander an I squared C IO expander which is what that is right there that way instead of mapping all these buttons one to one over the connector they can send it as a serial signal so yeah it's cheaper to put in a chip than another connector isn't that crazy but that's the world we live in but now I guess the connector would be cheaper than the chip <laughs> Actually, stuff like I.O. expanders, that's actually still fairly obtainium. It's the microcontrollers that really suffer. Oh, and this D-pad. Oh, it's so much clickier than the old versions. It's actually the same thing. It's a surface mount tack switch. All they did was they made this mold hollow so it echoes more. That's the only difference. I did a video regarding analog joysticks earlier this year. And, uh, to reiterate some of that, someone might just say, well, you know, the Dreamcast had Hall Effect sensors. Dreamcast had Hall Effect sensors for the analog triggers and for the joystick. This has Hall Effect sensors for the analog triggers. See that magnet it just goes to and fro, that sensor. So this controller already consumes two Hall Effect sensors. So if you wanted to use it for the joysticks, you'd need, well, you could probably, you, you could do it with three per joystick, but that's three more chips in this modern age. So I don't know. Maybe they could move back to a rotary encoder like the N64 had. That's why the N64, even no matter how chewed up and torn up that analog stick got, it always still worked because it it was an optical sensor that sensed relative movement, kind of like the uh, mouse wheel on your mouse. I mean, Hall Effect sensors, I mean, that'd be the way to go. It's just, it's a really, it, this is a really bad time to add a more expensive, harder to find chip to a controller. They already charge way too much of these controllers. What's a PlayStation 5 controller is like, what, like $75 now? You can still get the Xbox controllers pretty cheap because there's not much to them. All right, let's give this a try. Walk that way. All right, let's see if we need to get stuck again. See, there's a pretty good dead zone on these. Looks like we're good to go. Nice. Say something, bud. Speak. There you go. Well, there you have it. We didn't solve all the mysteries of stick drift, but we learned a little bit more about the issue. 
And now Bud is trying to start his own stick drift problem. Bud, are you playing Dark Souls? Are you the Dark Souls of cats?